Singapore, the wealthiest country in Asia with the second highest GDP per capita by purchasing power parity, is the go-to place for business in Asia. The small nation state, slightly larger than Chicago, is also a wealth hub where the rich invest and hold wealth. Ever since the Singapore government exempted investment grade precious metals like gold and silver from the sales tax, it is fast becoming one of the most important trading hubs for bullion. Now, the nation state is getting the crown jewel for its bullion industry as Singapore based company Silver Bullion embarks on the building of the highest capacity gold and silver vault not only in the country but the world. Called the Reserve, this vault is so massive that it can store up to 500 million troy ounces of silver and 18 million troy ounces of gold. According to the 2021 World Silver Survey, 130 million troy ounces are held by the Shanghai Gold Exchange. Likewise, nearly 400 million troy ounces of identifiable silver bullion is currently held by COMEX, which is one of the largest commodity exchanges in the world. In other words, the reserves vault can easily hold both the entire COMEX and Shanghai Gold Exchange's silver inventories. Undertaking this ambitious project is the facility's owner, Silver Bullion, founded by Gregor Gregerson in 2009. Back then, there was hardly any company in the country selling investment-grade silver to the public. I'm Gregor Gregerson. I'm the founder of Silver Bullion and the Safe House, as well as the Reserve. I started in Bullion because of the opportunity. Um, and because I felt there was something that was needed in the world. Uh, the reason was, I was in 2008, I was in, uh, working in a major bank in the trading room and Lehman Brothers went bankrupt. Investment bank Lehman Brothers announced plans to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Lehman Brothers filing for bankruptcy. Lehman Brothers staff arrived at work in London this morning to be told the bank had been put into administration. And there's also the aftermath of you know, the, the financial system almost collapsing and people went out and bought precious metals. And I realized, geez, that's a good idea. And I realized we're going to have a bigger financial crisis coming down the line. And wouldn't it make sense to own some precious metals? Uh, by that time, I already lived in Singapore. I tried to find some gold and silver and there wasn't any place to get silver in Singapore. And so, it just sort of became my mission to find a way to own silver for myself and then once I managed to do that, I thought, hey, maybe somebody else is interested in, in owning silver as well. And that was how Silver Bullion started. I was my first customer, essentially. I partially called the company Silver Bullion because I figured, well, if you're in Singapore and you're looking at Google, you know, what do you type in? So Silver Bullion, you know, sort of seemed to make sense. And a lot of people thought it was a bad idea to try and get it started and that was a good indication for me that you know it's probably a good thing to start because nobody thought it was a good thing to do uh, so we didn't have much competition and we kind of jump start the whole thing uh, that was back in 2009. My name is Virgil I'm a director at Silver Bullion I've been with the company since 2011. I met Gregor way back this was in April 2008 we met at a board game tournament. There were 64 participants. And yeah, we were down to the, about the final four, to in the final table of four. Yeah, he was the champion. And I, I was second runner up. And then we kept in touch after the tournament. You know, we became friends since then. So in the early days of Silver Bullion, we, we had no office. You had, of course, you had to have a virtual office. You have to have that. The Bullion was really, you know, with Gregor in his bedroom. I essentially bought it and I put it under my bed. And because my background is software engineer, I ended up developing on my free time uh, an e-commerce site, which essentially had live pricing and live inventory. And it actually turned, up, turned out to be quite a sophisticated website at the time. I think we were the only website in Southeast Asia, you know, back in 2009, which had live pricing and, and, and inventories. We were not selling gold or platinum back then, only silver bars and coins. But then if somebody would, somebody would place an order, we would then place the bars or coins in our backpacks. We would then, yeah, meet them at the MRT station, transact with them, and yeah, that was how it began. So it started off as an experiment. And I think once, you know, when we were eight, nine months into it and I had sales almost every day and 
you know, we reached about seven, eight hundred thousand Singapore dollars. That's you know more than half a million U.S. dollars in in sales. I think it became clear that uh, I could pay for an office and start getting some staff, and I would be able to pay for those expenses just from you know the the profits generated by the business. Silver Bullion's founding could not be more timely. In 2012, the Singapore government exempted investment-grade precious metals like gold, silver, and platinum for the goods and services tax to grow the country's bullion industry. So when GST was uh, removed in October 2012 by the Singapore government on precious metals, it was a big deal for us. And this is because from that point on, we received a lot of inquiries, a lot of foreigners, and they want to keep their wealth in Singapore. Not just buy here, but keep them here, because then there are, there's no GST any longer. There's no tax anymore on, on buying and selling. And yeah, that was uh, momentous for us. Silver Bullion started their storage program in 2012 before operating its own vault called The Safe House in 2014. I'm John. I'm the director of The Safe House. I have been with the company for 12 years. The Safe House is a secure storage facility we store precious metal like gold, silver, and platinum. And we also store strategic metal like, like iridium, germanium for our client. The safe house is also a bond warehouse. We are approved and licensed by the Singapore Custom to help clients to store their goods here with deferred payment of uh, tax and duty. Our old vault had a capacity of around 600 tons, but then in practice, a portion of that capacity was used for our large safe deposit boxes, which means in practice, you know, about 450 tons of capacity was, was available. Providing an end-to-end -end service for customers worked, and the amount of bullion stored at the safe house began to increase. Gregor believes that the demand for silver storage in a safe jurisdiction like Singapore is about to skyrocket. The opportunity in silver is really big. It has a ton of industrial uses. It's a very good conductor of uh, heat, of electricity. Yeah, it's rarely discussed. It's just a long forgotten metal. Silver is, is a forgotten metal because, you know, in Europe, if you buy silver, you have to pay a uh, sales tax, 19%. So why would somebody buy silver? In Asia, it so has been forgotten because gold is, you know, uh, more interesting in, in, in culture, even so it was the foundation of the economies here for a long, long time. It's never talked about so much in, in mass media, not like gold, and it still is money. It is, you know, one of the most important metals that you need for many modern applications, whether it's uh, computer chips, you know, your average keyboard has two grams of silver into it, the solar panels and so on. It wasn't worthwhile to recover that, it now landed up in the landfill somewhere. And unless silver goes way up in price, it's not economic to go into the landfill and retrieve that. Which basically means that we only have a tiny fraction of the silver reserve we used to have in the past. We keep on using up a lot of silver, and then on top of that, we are now valuing silver at being worth only one eight years of gold, when the natural sort of uh, balance used to be one to 16. So I'm looking at silver as being a metal which uh, is undeservingly underappreciated, is way undervalued, and there's a lot less of it than we used to have. So what's not to like? We built the safe house back in 2014 or so. And by the time 2018 came along, we already started looking for a larger location. It was not just about finding a larger location, it was also about buying our own place. Because um, if you're building a vault and you're putting, you know, you have to put quite a bit of capital investment into it. And if, the, if you're renting it from somebody, you're always sort of beholden to, to the landlord. If he starts increasing your rent, what are you going to do about it? It's so hard to move. So our long-term goal has always been to find you know, a, a place that we can own and run and which will give us enough capacity uh, to really remove constraints on our storage.
accepted. In 2020 was the time when we started getting more and more concerned or really realized that we really only had about a year left uh, you know, at our current location at that rate of growth uh, before we are going to run out of space. Deaths associated with the coronavirus continue to climb. The toll of the coronavirus widens here in the U.S. The Dow just had its biggest point drop in history. Stock markets opened in a state of high anxiety. While the safe haven of gold has hit its highest level in seven years. Gold prices have hit an all-time high. So COVID, what it really happened in 2020, March 2020, uh, the world froze, uh, financial markets too were, were stopping, uh, lockdowns were happening, and, and gold and silver were not spared uh, in terms of their spots, spot prices, futures prices. While that was happening, uh, demand was going up and the premiums were also going up. So there was clamoring for physical metals and we virtually sold out everything we had for sale on our website. In 2020, during the COVID period, we had to work extra hard due to a lot of uh, people transferring in their bullion to us. And we also experienced a spike in the demand for gold and silver. 2020 was a very good year for us. In terms of bullion sold, in many ways, we are sort of limited by the amount of bullion we could get uh, at the time. And I think it ended up being around 300 million Singapore dollars, uh, which would be around 230 million uh, US dollars. and. Uh, the majority of that was for storage. So it added to our gold holdings, or added to our silver holdings, uh, to the point that we exceeded the 400 ton uh, you know, level for silver. So with all this uh, bullying coming in, we are really running out of space. We need to actually get a bigger space as we are running out very soon. We had to start looking for uh, a larger bullion storage location because we're starting to uh, get short on space, essentially. As gold and silver bars and coins began to fill up quickly, Gregor and his team realized that their earlier plans for a larger vault had to be brought forward. One of the buildings shortlisted in their search was a six-story building located at 6 Changi South Street 3, located in the east of Singapore, just eight minutes away from Changi International Airport. We got lucky. We got lucky in that we found a building which was perfect for us. It was ideal. So when Gregor first was presenting it to all of us, we were like, okay, this building looks big. You know, that was the impression. You know, you, you would think, yeah, this building looks big, you know, it's impressive. What, 180,000 square feet? You know, again, you can't put that to, 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 to mind. You know, it's, it's just a number. And then when you finally visit, you, you're, you're, you're really flabbergasted you know, you, you cannot imagine that it's too big. You know, it's, it's cavernous, it's humongous. Uh, and you think, are we being too optimistic? You know, can we fill up this space? When I first stepped into the building, I was stunned. And when I look at the ceiling, it was 34 meter height, almost the same as the space shelter height. So when you walk into that room, you, you, you walk up, uh, some small ch stairs and then you're basically kind of overwhelmed. The first impression, you know, half the room was still occupied by the steel framing, which was a big logistic machine uh, around which the building was built. And you sort of speechless for a while and you kind of need a moment for your brain to sort of take it all in. And then you start wondering, this place is way too big for us. And, you know, that was sort of my first impression of the building. However, stacking a dense element like silver high is no easy feat. Before that can be done, the foundations of the building must be able to sustain the silver's weight. Otherwise, the floor will crack, causing stacked silver to become unstable. When you're trying to build a new vault, you have to look at three basic you know, factors. Um, one of it is flow loading, which basically means how much weight can you put on that floor? Because that's oftentimes, you know, what limits you, especially when you're talking about silver storage. The next point is what is the cost? Because you obviously need to uh, keep the cost in check in order to make the whole thing feasible. And the third part is you, you still want to have an area that is AC secure. Now Singapore is secure anywhere pretty much, uh, but you still want to have 
a certain convenience and you want to have a certain uh, an area that sort of fits well. And we got all of these threes in, in uh, the location we found. And the thing specifically about this building that struck me was it was ideal for us because it had a floor loading of 90 kilonewtons. Now to give you an idea, a parking garage would normally have two kilonewton floor loading. So this floor can handle 45 times more weight than your average parking lot. Looking at the space and the height of the ceiling plus the floor loading, yes, it definitely fit into what we want for our business. Then once we realized the floor loading, my next impression was, okay, I, I really ought to try and get this building. Buildings with such high floor loading are uncommon in Singapore. Given the exceptional weight this building's foundations can handle, Gregor already has a vision for what he will store in this space. For us, that meant that we can now stack silver, not three meters high, like we were planning, but we can stack it 12 meters high, that's 36 feet. Um, and that basically meant that we can have an order of magnitude more efficiency compared to a typical vault which then means that we can get really huge storage capacities um, without having to spend a lot of money. So what would it be like when someone visits this massive silver vault? So the vision here really is, if you're looking at these walls, the second beam up here, that's about 12 meters, uh, each one of these is about five and a half meters or so. So it will be a little bit higher than that second beam. That's how high the silver will be going. and. Uh, when you walk in, the, the idea is that we're going to have these rows um, going throughout the room and it will essentially be like a canyon of silver. If a customer were to walk through the aisle you know, and see all those silver stack up, you know, 12 meter high, I think they will remember this experience for the rest of their life. They would think that this is, this is you know, unimaginable. They would say, I've only seen this in, in Hollywood movies, you know, like vaults filled with lots of gold, lots of silver. So the main room with a 90 kilo newton uh, will be able to store almost 10,000 tons of silver. So the capacity is crazy, but what you have to understand is it comes almost for free. Once we made the decision to buy this building and once we made the decision to uh, store the gold and the silver and the gold and store it using the 90 kilonewton floor loading. You know, what's the difference between why would we only put our eggs half of the way? It would be a waste, right? We will be not saving much money and have half the capacity, so why do that? Um, so in a sense, uh, it's, it is a capacity which will allow us to uh, store not just silver, but we can store a lot of rare industrial metals. We can store indium, we can store germanium, we can store all these metals which say are between 200 to $5,000 per kilo. So we are coming in providing 15,000 tons of capacity for these type of metals. I believe the reserve is a very unique building. There are not many buildings in the world that have the capacity to store 15,000 tons of silver. This is equivalent to 28% of globally identifiable silver reserves. And yeah, this is uh, truly one of a kind. The reserve is still months away from completion, but Gregor and his team are steadily making progress to realizing his vision of the reserve to be a safe harbor for wealth from the systemic crisis that he sees in the coming years. On the next episode. With us buying this large facility, so there was no reason whatsoever to keep on renting you know, a smaller location. The plan was very clear for us to move. It was just a matter of figuring out when to move and how to do so in a safe manner. Gold was quite easy to transport, but moving almost 400 tons of silver, that was really a bigger challenge. We also spent many nights through Zoom meeting with the insurance surveyors in London. It took two months of planning, but we moved around 400 tons of precious metals in three or four days.